Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a fundamental tutorial talking about a concept called a dynamic surface sampling. So let's start. So here we in Blender and this is a very simple setup. I have a simple grid and uh, I have a distribute point on faces. Uh, note that this node is using density and you cannot really switch to count. Uh, there are many benefits using the density but uh, the disadvantage may also be very obvious. The benefit is that when you're increasing the scale of your procedural geometry, you can see because the density is constant, this new empty space caused by stretching will be filled very quickly with new points. But it also means that you're getting more points when you're changing this geometry which means that you may accidentally instance billions of particles or your instances, which may potentially crash your computer. Actually, it can happen very often. So in order to solve this problem, I made a preset, which is called point distribute. You can download it for free from the link in the description. Okay. And uh, this name is actually the older version of this distribute point on face. Anyway, and uh, we can delete uh, this old node. And uh, when we use these presets, we have basically an option to set the amount. And uh, by increasing and decreasing the scale of our initial grid, you can see the count is basically the same. It does not really change. Uh, it's not necessarily accurate as the amount you set because there can be some computational error, but you get at least an, a kind of approximation. Uh, you will ge definitely generate empty space when you're scaling up your geometry, but if you want, you can just easily set more count. Uh, this is mainly to prevent some crash in case you're instancing billions of particles accidentally. This method, however, is not yet perfect. Currently, the amount is not changed uh, by increasing or decreasing the scale of our grid. This is because uh, from face area to face area, the ratio is always consistent. Like it's always like one to one ratio in a grid. In other geometry, maybe there will, there will be cases like a two to one, three to one, whatever stuff. But uh, the relative ratio will always be the same. So that uh, no matter how you scale up and down, the amount of points will not be changed. Okay, But the problem occurs when you are uh, dynamically deforming it. So let's add a normal displacement. Uh, let's add a noise 3D. So this is basically a displacement modifier that uh, Let's increase in the vertices amount. I'm basically having a landscape here. You can increase the scale, of course. Okay, so we have a lot of mountains, ridges, and whatever. And I can use a 4D evolution to really move that like uh, ocean water or whatever stuff. Okay. However, if you look at the amount of points, let's decrease our, the amount of points and see what will actually happen. Remember, this is the picture we have now. But if I increase this evolution, then you can see there is actually one additional point being created somewhere. So from this area, so there is an additional point being created as I move my evolution and some points will actually disappear. This is because the relative scale of this face area is being distorted. So some parts is being crushed to generate less points, but some part is expanded to generate more points. Okay. This type of phenomena is 100% expected when you are distributing on a geometry because the evaluation only occurs for a particular state. It does not predict how you're going to deform it. But as a side effect, you are actually creating lots of glitch when you are instancing something. Okay, so let's create uh, some cube, some UV sphere, some torus, some Suzanne monkey, just uh, 
to instance them on this plane. So let's put them into a collection. Okay. And uh, within geometry node tree, I'm going to point instance. And let's uh, put our collection, separate the children's, and I'm picking the instance. So every point will actually get one of the instance we have from this collection. So now we have it, and it looks kind of very big. So let's just use a value precision to divide this scale by 10. Maybe we can increase that a little bit bigger. And now if I keep deforming my geometry, you can see there are lots of glitches. Okay, it's kind of very annoying. Especially if you're trying to put a random value somewhere, the glitch will be uh, more pronounced because the index will just be shuffled uh, when you're deleting one point or adding a new point there, something like that, okay? So today we're basically talking about a method to solve this kind of problem, uh, to remove this type of glitches. Uh, firstly, we need to understand one kind of concept is that uh, this is a kind of a cheating method, but uh, with simulation nodes, the concept is that you input a geometry, okay? And uh, starting from the second frame, this geometry well, this regards whatever you input before, but it started to take the inputs from this simulation output. Okay, so it forms a kind of a loop. And the output is giving information to the input and you run through this loop every frame. This actually means that uh, you are having kind of a freezing effect of what's going on. So here, let's just use a sync time node and I'm going to put the seconds into the evolution. And by playing the animation, let's just uh, make the timeline like five billion, whatever. So by playing this animation, you can see my plane is uh, wiggling with this noise displacement. But if we look at uh, this simulation input and output, you can see it's not moving. Okay. So this is a very important trick that we are going to play when we're doing this kind of functionality. Okay, so we're point instance on this static geometry so that we do not have any glitches. Then we're going to deform these points uh, in relative to the movement. So what we're going to do now is that uh, we're going to sample this frozen state to get information from this dynamic state. So we sample nearest surface and we sample the position, which is a vector. And then if I set position uh, from this sampling, you will see that nothing occurs. I disable the linkage, these points are not moving this is because our points are distributed on this frozen state. They are already on the nearest surface. So you do not need to sample anything or sampling will not move anything. However, uh, if we are using this position attribute from dynamic state, then things are expected to be different. And basically we're going to sample the position from this dynamic state. Or you can say that we are transferring this position value from this dynamic state to this static state. And the way we're going to do is that we need to figure out components which are the same. So one component can be the same, which is index. Uh, and the other component is actually the UV map. There are some downsides using UV map, although there may also be some benefit using UV map, but more frequently, I think index should be the one you choose. So we sample index. And I use vector. So I sample this position value 
based on the index, and I get this dynamic state. Once I get this dynamic state, I replace the information. So now you can see that the, our sample position is basically the initial position of these points, and they are not moving. And I'm sampling this static geometry, which is also not moving. But uh, the information it gets is actually what we, you get from this sample index. So now if we look at this point, you can see there is some movement, but uh, something is wrong. Something is significantly wrong. This is because at the first frame, the plane is the same, but the points are different. This is because the index value we get actually comes from these points instead of this frozen state. So uh, it's kind of surprising, but uh, to fix that, it's kind of very easy. You just uh, capture attributes. So now you can see it recovers. And more importantly, if you start to play this animation with our dynamic plane, then you can see that they are moving and you do not see new cubes, new torus, or new monkey. Okay, you can see everything is kind of stable. Uh, as a comparison, if you use this dynamic state directly, uh, and you do not set the position, then you will see there glitches happening. Okay. So dynamic surface sampling is very important in this case. And this turns out to be presets, dynamic surface sampling, in which you have a target geometry that you're going to deform and you have a frozen state, you have a dynamic state as what we're seeing now. And uh, currently this is just a set position, but of course it can be much more complicated as you want to rotate this relative to the surface normal. So you have to keep sampling normal or other things in order to get normal rotations and even other attributes. But basically this is idea. This is relatively simple. Uh, in the future, I may spend some tutorial talking about the usage of these presets, but the general principle is really the same as what we discussed today, which may present like six uh, nodes or more in total. Okay. So, and uh, another thing I want to warn you is that previously I mentioned about UV map. There can be cases that the index is not working. If you do not only deform this geometry, you may also remesh this geometry. Then the index will be messed up. In such kind of a scenario that the UV map may also work. So in that case, you want to use sample UV surface. But it's a long story, and there are many downsides of a sample UV surface, like the performance issue, some caution that you need to take. Uh, it's kind of out of scope today, because it's still questionable that whether you really want to use UV surface or you want to use index. So uh, I will skip that part and uh, let's see what we can really do with this technique in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.